Reagan Taylor, I'm 30 years old. I'm a housewife and a freelance writer who works from home. I married two years ago and now share my home with my husband, daughter, and mother-in-law. Christopher, my husband, is five years my senior. I met him three years ago on a dating app that I co-founded with a buddy. Both Christopher and I enjoy watching movies. We had a lot in common, so we immediately exchanged phone numbers. He was a wise man with a mature demeanor. I was drawn to him, and we began dating. Six months later, he proposed to me, and we quickly decided to marry. However, there was one issue we had to resolve before we could marry. That was Skylar's existence. Skylar and I have no kinship. She is the child of Christopher and his ex-wife. When we married, she was already 10 years old. She is now in junior high school. I still perceive a significant chasm between us. I understand why she finds it difficult to think of me as her mother, yet she still despises me. Until lately, she ignored me, even when I tried to communicate with her. She makes fun of me now, without a doubt. Skylar came home from her after-school activities the other day, just as I was starting dinner. I called out to her and inquired about her day, but she did not react. I was picturing her ignoring me as usual. When she flung something at my bag, I looked down and noticed that it was Skylar's exercise clothes that had dropped. She gave me a look as I took it up. I'll need those tomorrow, so wash them right away. With a bewildered expression on my face, I spoke to Skylar. I'm guessing you had another set of gym clothes. Even if I wash them now, they will not be dry by tomorrow. Can you bring the second set? Huh? Why are you directing my actions? I told you to wash them. Even if I begin washing it right now, it will not be dry by tomorrow. That is the reason. Stop talking. You were told to do it. So stop talking and get to work. You're worthless. I'll notify dad and grandma if it isn't ready by tomorrow morning. Best of luck with it. She dashed up the stairs to her room. She would not listen to anything I said. I couldn't help but take her gym clothes to the laundromat. While placing them in the dryer, I was overcome with an awful sense of emptiness. I married Christopher knowing she would never be attached to me, but I never expected to suffer so much. When are you going to treat me normally, Skylar? I want to have regular interactions with you, even if I can't be your mother. I suppose I shouldn't rush it. I need to put in more effort. We shall eventually comprehend each other. That's what I told myself, barely keeping my spirits up. I was the one who made the decision to marry. I must not abandon the process in the midst of it. I carried that concept with me throughout the day. Actually, aside from Skylar, I have another issue. That's my wife's mother. My mother-in-law, like Skylar, appears to be dissatisfied with me. She has despised me since the start of our marriage. When I got home from the laundromat that day, my mother-in-law was waiting for me at the door. Where the hell have you been, Reagan? What happened to dinner? I apologize. Because the side dish is done, I'll get started with the remainder immediately. What have you been doing up until this hour? You weren't just goofing off, were you? No, I didn't. Skylar requested that I take her workout clothing to the laundromat. So, are you implying that it was Skylar's fault? You enjoy blaming people, don't you? That was not my intention. Simply prepare the food. Christopher will be arriving soon. Skylar is probably hungry as well. Yes, sir. I'll have it done immediately. My mother-in-law often blames me when she doesn't like something. She'd blame me for something like this. This attitude made me feel terrible for myself when I was a newlywed. Things are a little better now than they were before. However, the damage has been done. The comparison to my husband's ex-wife hurt the most. Her name was apparently Eva. 
My mother-in-law constantly compares me to his ex-wife and makes comments as if I were lesser. Eva could have done a better job. Eva's cuisine was wonderful. She was a compassionate and loving wife. I wish Eva would return. Etc. Christopher claims that his ex-wife's adultery caused their divorce. My mother-in-law obviously adores Derek, so why does she lavish praise on the ex-wife who precipitated the divorce? I wouldn't be surprised if she loathed whoever wounded her precious son. But I don't have the luxury of being concerned about such things. How am I going to get around in this place now? How will I handle my mother-in-law and Skylar? Every day, I have to think about these things carefully and act accordingly. It is quite demanding and taxing. Nonetheless, I was resolved to do everything possible for the sake of my dear husband. I did not express my displeasure to my husband regarding my mother-in-law or daughter-in-law. I primarily asked him how we could get along. On this particular day, I narrated the sequence of events and inquired of him before going to bed. Are you paying attention, Christopher? Your mother and Skylar again reprimanded me today. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. I always tell you not to be concerned about it. I advised you to leave them alone because Skylar is a teenager, and my mother is like that sometimes. That will never happen. We'll be living together from now on. How can we coexist and get along? Jarrett, you should think about it as well. He responded in a disinterested tone without moving his gaze away from the phone, so I pressed him. Please understand that I am serious. I'm seeking advice. I understand why people dislike me, but your mother compares me to Eva. What? Eva? She claims Eva was a better wife than I was. She always tells me that I should put myself in my shoes for a while. I really want to get along well with my mother-in-law. Even if you say so, I'm confident that everything will go as planned. Only time will tell. That is ridiculous. Nonsense. I'm not kidding. All you have to do is make an attempt to gain the approval of my mother and Skylar. Consider that, and then do your best. My husband touched my shoulder, whispered good night, and drew the blankets over his head. I was wondering if he was actually sleeping or if he was just acting. He never responded, no matter how many times I called out to him. Skylar came down from her room the next day as I was starting breakfast. As she gets ready for school, I hand her the gym clothes, beautifully folded and packaged. Skylar, here you go. This is the gym attire you requested yesterday. Skylar, are you paying attention? These were taken yesterday. Stop talking. I'm aware of your presence. Isn't it clear that I'm ignoring you on purpose? Why are you ignoring me? You could at least try to communicate with me. What? Do you want me to say something to say thank you? Huh? Skylar exhaled deeply and snatched the workout gear from my grasp. Then she added angrily, you're so annoying every time. You're behaving as if you're my mother. You should never have married your father in the first place. That's too much, Skylar. So vexing. Why do you irritate me from the moment I wake up? You actually make me sick. She ate the bread my mother-in-law had bought for herself instead of the breakfast I had cooked. She then thanked her grandmother for the dinner and left for school. I went to the door to say goodbye, but I didn't even get a response. I didn't have a choice. I should finish the breakfast she left me. When I went into the living room, however, I discovered that the dishes that should have been there had vanished. My plates had been thrown into the sink. What exactly is this? Why? A little giggle came from behind me. My mother-in-law smiled as she approached. No way. Did you accomplish this? Yes, because it appeared to be so horrible. I tossed it away for Skylar because she didn't seem to want it. How can you be so awful? What motivated you to accomplish this? Terrible. 
It is entirely your fault that you can only cook such poor meals. It's entirely your responsibility. Why? Whatever I replied back, my mother-in-law repaid me tenfold with her comments. She kept coming at me from all sides. On top of that, she followed me to the supermarket. The worst happened to me a few hours later. I was on my way home after finishing the shopping my mother-in-law had requested. That's when I got into a car accident. When the ambulance took me to the hospital, my right leg had become paralyzed. Walking by myself became difficult for me. The doctor informed me that I would have to use a wheelchair for the foreseeable future. Despite the fact that my life was not in danger, I was hospitalized for a few days. The hospital must have notified my family. My husband, mother-in-law, and daughter-in-law soon arrived to see me at the hospital. I was in my wheelchair, and they were all lined up in front of me. Were they concerned enough to come to visit me? I was overjoyed and thanked them. Everyone has arrived. Thank you very much for your visit. Is your leg going to recover? My husband inquired, concerned. I shook my head and said it while still smiling. The doctor stated it might be better than it is today, but it would be tough to entirely heal. It will be some time before I can walk on my own. I see. Then I guess I don't have much of a choice. Is there a choice? Thank you so much, Reagan. What? Christopher. My spouse gives me a cruel smile as he looks down at me. I was perplexed, not knowing what he meant by, thank you. Perhaps sensing something, my husband began to speak. It was only a short time, but I'm delighted I married you. You completed the housekeeping without complaint. You also provided us with a substantial sum of money with which to survive. What are you on about? Their demeanor had plainly shifted. The corners of their mouths are raised, but I detected something sinister. That was the type of expression. My husband, mother-in-law, and Skylar all opened their mouths first when I shrunk in front of them. You can't even do chores anymore, therefore, you're no longer useful to us. I completely agree. Isn't it time to terminate this housekeeper? Great. I can now bid farewell to this old lady. My husband and mother-in-law were yelling at me while I was in a wheelchair, and my daughter cursed at me without showing any concern. My body stiffened, and my legs trembled as a result of the shock. My spouse eventually said his dying words to me, looking down at me. I married you and kept our marriage together so you could look after the house. In other words, now that you're in a wheelchair, you're no longer useful to me. Oh no, does that imply divorce is inevitable? Thank you for being my housekeeper for so long. Take your belongings and leave our residence as soon as you leave the hospital. My spouse pulled the divorce papers from his suitcase and placed them in front of me. His part had already been filled. They exited the hospital room without waiting for my response. The sound of their footsteps and laughter faded as the door to the room closed. My heart was already full of rage toward them at the time. He never liked me from the start. He married me and relied on me to care for his daughter. This is inexcusable. They're all three of them. I'll never be able to forgive them. I immediately signed the divorce papers and called my mother. I explained the circumstances and requested that she return the signed divorce papers to the municipal hall. I was safely freed from the hospital a few days later and headed for my parents' house. I instructed my parents to notify my in-laws that I had filed for divorce and to pack my possessions. I went directly home to my folks' house. I was never going to see them again. I felt relieved and resolved to begin a new life. A familiar name, Christopher, arrived on my phone five years later. I had neglected to block his phone number. I did not answer the phone and removed his number from my phone. My ex-family showed up at my parents' place the next day. They knelt on the ground when they spotted me. I was perplexed and wondering what was going on when Christopher abruptly glanced up and began, help us. What? 
what do you mean so unexpectedly? Reagan, please. You are the only person on whom I can rely. What is the point of this? I'd like to borrow some money from you. We can't make a livelihood otherwise. This is how I would summarize his words. They had a comfortable life for a while after I departed. However, when Schuyler enrolled in a private high school, their financial situation became increasingly tough. Schuyler was stealing money from the house in order to acquire the items she desired. Not only that, but Christopher's mother was spending her son's earnings on beauty treatments and fancy brand items. They started borrowing money when their funds ran out. They couldn't pay back their loans. And they found themselves in a position where they couldn't borrow any more money. Schuyler's tuition was the most pressing concern at the time. She was unable to maintain her grades. As a result, parents appear to have to pay exorbitant fees to keep her in school. They applied for a scholarship, but her grades were so low that she was about to be dismissed from school. Jarrett massaged his eyes and rubbed his head against the ground as he finished telling me what had happened. Please, please, please. It's just as I said. You must have made a fortune. So I'm pleading with you. Could you please lend us some money? His mother and Skylar followed us, even if only a bit. They pleaded as one. They disgusted me five years ago. They evicted me from the residence after daily bullying. When they are in need of money, they return as if nothing had happened. I was aware that I was still being utilized for their benefit. I was even becoming enraged. The next thing I knew, I was turning on the FTE at the front door and spraying them with water. What in the world are you doing? You're bitching again. They were all screaming and yelling. What exactly are you doing? It's quite cold. Don't get too excited. You're the old half. We are counting on you and pleading with you to assist us. This is clearly not the method to request assistance. I blotted out my genuine feelings, which I had been holding in my heart all this time, once their true nature was revealed. You're counting on me. I never asked you to put your trust in me. You took advantage of me for your personal benefit, and now you want me to assist you because you're in trouble. That's nonsense. How much longer can you mock me? What? What the hell is going on? How dare you speak to me in that manner? We're in a lot of trouble. I don't mind. I don't care how much trouble you're in or whether you're starving. I couldn't care less. Rather, I'm relieved that you're in danger. This is what you have earned. In a million years, I will never help you. Why don't you just lick each other's wounds for the rest of your lives? I shut the door as hard as I could once I finished spraying them with water. I literally cut them off by locking the front door. They were yapping and yelling in front of the house for a time after that. A neighbor who couldn't tolerate it any longer contacted the cops. The police took them away under the guise of nuisance. The rumor that they were having problems with the cops circulated across the community. The story eventually made its way to Christopher's company. He resigned freely because he couldn't stand the side-eye from his co-workers. They were unable to pay Skylar's school expenses as a result, and she was forced to drop out of high school. Now, all three are striving to pay off their loans. They appear to be collaborating with each other. When they meet, however, they are always blaming each other for their troubles. Every day, the family relationship deteriorates. This is all I can aspire for, in my opinion. All I can say is that they earned it. On the other hand, while my parents are taking care of me, I continue to work at home. My leg has gotten considerably more mobile, and I am currently undergoing rehabilitation in order to complete my recuperation. I can't express how grateful I am to my parents for accepting me back after my divorce. I'm going to live life to the fullest for my father, mother, and myself from now on.